really a big presence except in like the kind of terrible team fights that they had in the end. It's it's also that they had no control over the map and CLG the entire game they dictated the tempo of the game. So yeah. the entire game it looked like Quantic was almost scared. You know they were they were playing uh, they were very passive and they just CLG because they were so so on the offensive. Yeah. Um, Quantic was never able to make anything happen, so they weren't ever able to use that Kaelin effectively early on. Yeah, and Mr. Staifuhia also mentioned that uh, Big Fat LP, he needs to be shut down. That's a great point. And I, and I absolutely agree. He was able to just... Some top quality uh, That's top, top quality. Yeah, there. so I mean, appreciate him chiming in, but I, and I agree. Big Fat LP, he was able to kind of roam around and jump in that top lane and take him out into the tower, you know, and just be really aggressive. And Diana is an aggressive champ, but she also gets burned down really quickly. And actually, the Zonios was pretty late yeah. on Diana in that game. So early game, you know, put some more pressure on her and uh, and see how he reacts. But that's, I mean, that's still tough because Diana's so strong. Like their comp as a whole yeah. was insanely strong. That's true. But it's something we've seen CLG run in the past. And um, so I, I, I feel like Quantic, it, it's kind of a new strategy of theirs that they're working on. And it, it, I, I believe they took it from Azubu Blaze. But Fiddlesticks being banned. I, you know, honestly, Quantic can't allow CLG to have that same strategy. I, it's very strong. I think they have to worry about it. But No, I mean, so why, why, is, why is CLG banning Fiddle against Quantic? I didn't think uh, Fiddle was all that present in the game. Yeah. Not very scary indeed. Maybe they were concerned with you know, the potential of Fiddle. Okay. More so than the actuality. Yeah. You know, and he, he wasn't, he didn't really um, put a lot of pressure, but he, he was strong in the laning phase. You know, they have to, if they don't lane swap, if they're laning against Fiddle, maybe that's scary. If he does get off to a good start, you know, he can snowball the game. Yeah. And you had mentioned, uh, you know, you thought that the Vayne would I, switch I hands. I thought they were going to. But, and you know, he hasn't locked in yet. Maybe he will. Caitlin. Yeah, I maybe he thinks he can do something else with Caitlyn this time around. And, they you just know, want a second chance. Yeah, I mean, he, he. we have seen some great games out of Caitlyn, but, I mean, the reason she didn't do that well in the last game is because of her weakness, which is that mm -hmm. single target damage. And really, I mean, when you're up against Malphite, who can really take a lot of damage, you're not going to really flourish in that environment. He, I mean, he power farmed, though, and yeah. now they grab the Malphite. So, Interesting, okay. Um, they, get, they break up that old comp. Nunu is already on uh, CLG. They swap to Cassiopeia last second. So they don't actually go with that Caitlyn early on. Does this mean we're going to see Nian mid actually this time, and Maybe. have, and then have Turtle down bot as AD? Maybe. Wouldn't be surprised. Uh, you were saying, we, I mean, we we've talked with Nian, and you said you had talked to Nian, and when he went to that mid lane, he said, you know, oh, I never said I was an AP carry. Yeah. I'm just going to be playing the mid lane for us. Yeah, exactly. And so he played, you know, Gangplank mid, and he played Caitlyn mid. So. You know, that, that is the possibility. It could be something unusual for him, and we'll see what Wild Turtle can do in that bot lane. You know, they just want to kind of tr switch uh, things up, but now they have a really strong AoE as opposed uh, team as opposed to last game where it was a lot more single target focused. Yeah, I'm less familiar with what uh, Wild Turtle likes to play in that bot as I AD. No I wonder if he plays the, the normal uh, Trinity, you know, the Ezreal, Graves, right. and Corky. But you know what? It's interesting. Even though people are like, those are the gods of the bot lane, in competitive play, the Sultans of swing. we really don't see them a whole lot. Yeah. We're seeing mostly Kog'Maw and mostly Vayne nowadays, and even Caitlyn is making a stronger appearance than they are. So it's interesting to see how the bot lane has evolved, and I wonder if it's alongside the 2v1s. And now it seems CLG is swapping up for that Caitlyn. And mm -hmm. they have the Nunu, and it's it's kind of the makings of this, the same team we had seen in the ESL uh, the other day, CLG Black uh, Prime versus Black, yeah. where they ran Caitlyn and Nunu, and now Quantic is grabbing the veins. So swapping up the AD carries, and they, they played a big role in that last game, uh, the damage output for the veins. So we'll, we'll see what they can do there. But um, Nocturne probably going to be picked up by Chalster again. So right now, Quantic, they have to be concerned with the mobility of both Diana and uh, Chalster, and they have to be kind of worrying uh, how they're going to deal with those early ganks. Like, what what is there going to be their rebuttal to CLG's uh, early strategy? And it probably means, um, you know, really strong jungler like Maokai, uh, since Maokai isn't banned, that can maybe rim a little bit. I guess they're, they're actually going to be using Malphite, and then Gragas is potentially going to be their top lane. Oh my so gosh. So top lane, Gragas, and yeah. then maybe even Cass. No, I bet lane. it's Cass, because I bet Turtle goes mid on Gragas. Yeah, that's true, because he does play Gragas. Yeah, and then we'll see uh, Yuzuki maybe playing Cass top. We've seen that before. It's pretty good. Very rarely. Yeah, but I think TBA 2v1 lane, one right? I remember. The 2v1, Cass would do pretty well. Yeah, actually. Back and, and just farm and hang out. And so I think we're going to see the, the, the lane swap coming out of Quantic, which begs the question, 
or at least the situation, if CLG thinks it's coming, where do they go? And there's so many mind games that go into that. If they think they're going top, so they go top, but actually Quantic decided to not swap. And at, then you know, all of a response. sudden the game just turns into an A ramp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I, where am I? My, their brain just yeah. stops working. But uh, CLG going with the Nidalee actually, and then Shogath. And we've seen Chelster playing a lot of Shogath recently. Yeah, we've seen I a lot of people that, playing a lot of Shogath recently. I thought they recently. would stick with the um, you know, Nocturne, but now they're turning it into more of a poke team. And, you know, maybe it's going to be an AP Nidalee even. We've seen AD is really the common thing right now. But Cho'Gath, as he really gives you a solid front line. He can't be worn down, um, you know, from Cassiopeia or Gregus, so he's pretty tanky. But then also he gives you great disengage. Uh, if he hits a knockup on Bane or something like that, they can maybe go in and get a kill. So all in all, it's a really strong jungling champion. And we get to see Hotshot playing Nidalee again. I really hope that it's AP just because it's really fun to watch. But AD is very strong as well. And we'll see what Quanta can do. I, you know, the Cassiopeia is going to be interesting, though, because do you remember the TPA versus SGS game um, that we looked at for the team review? I don't think so. Stanley, he went Cassiopeia. Oh, right, top, right. And he didn't do very well. No, he didn't. It was a 1v2 situation. And people talk about Stanley. Wow, it's going to be support Cassiopeia? Uh, what? Jungle Cassiopeia? Nah, I don't know. Maybe support Cass. Like, um, maybe a roaming Cass? Whatever no, it is, I'm real excited. Cast. Maybe maybe he won't pick Aurelia. Maybe that's just a troll trying to, you know, the mind games. All right. <laughs> Quartic right. is running support Cassiopeia, cool. maybe? Yeah. So this is... Support Malphite? Maybe support Mal... Well, uh, maybe. I Because so maybe just using for the ultimate, maybe the that was... The issue is whatever support they're running... Yeah. It's making things difficult on Vayne. Like, they're in a... Vayne's going to be in a really tough situation, um you know wherever they're going but that's that's really I'm interesting. so excited I'm looking forward to it I mean this is what I live for is like the really weird strategies yeah. you know or just unorthodox comps or unorthodox lanes and cast in this situation is actually pretty weird so everyone crack open a cold one get your friends on the line uh, sit back and <laughs> yeah. enjoy the game yeah. <laughs> I'm sit back enjoy the the antics the hijinks. I, this is going to be cool because they have a really nasty AOE team. Like if they catch everyone from CLG yeah. in their AOE, then it's going to be ridiculous. Uh, Twitch. Wait, Twitch? No. Maybe they communicated. So they must have. They must have been talking off of. Uh, so Cassiopeia. But why was, do they have Twitch? It's we've actually I've seen Quantic play Twitch before. I've seen okay. uh, Nien play Twitch for Quantic before. Okay. No, Wild Turtle played Twitch in replacement of Cass. Yeah. So no, it's Cass was actually a placeholder pick. Um, so for, Cass for was a Twitch? placeholder pick for Twitch. But then Twitch Vayne, so it's double Vayne, a AD now? Is Vayne going to be <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We'll see going what's going on. on. They're getting yeah. back into champ select, and we'll be able to take a look at what uh, these guys are going to be playing. Uh, at Lone Star Clash, they did actually play Twitch in that bottom lane. And they, yeah. um, you know, Twitch, we've seen kind of in and out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, he... he, he <clears throat> He can be a really strong AD after those buffs. Um, you know, we see Afro has been playing Twitch some. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of Twitch. Uh, don't mash me. Don't plays, mash me. Plays a good amount of Twitch his, too. His ultimate is insanely strong. Okay, so it's Lulu. And it's Lulu as well. So Cassiopeia is Lulu. Okay. So is that is that really the big difference? I wonder what. Okay, so Gragas, we got Lulu and support. This is a, a lot Vayne. more standard. Okay, yeah. So and I'm and a lot Twitch less jungle, happy. Then. Let me let me tell you. But it's still a Twitch so, jungle, maybe. No, it's Malphite jungle. Aurelia. Okay, so it is Vayne or Twitch. We don't know if it's Vayne or Twitch. It's one of the two. Well, it's Vayne, right? Because he picked Vayne earlier. So I, I think it's Vayne, but we'll we'll have but to see. But why did? Okay, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll have to see. Okay. It is Twitch. All right. So they don't go with the Vayne. I'm still pretty happy. And Vayne is, you know, insane. Vayne was strong, a placeholder. <laughs> but that's yeah, that's funny to use Vayne as a placeholder, considering she's a very highly sought after pick right now. Yeah. And we've seen Quantic use Vayne a lot. But Twitch, his ultimate is insanely good in team fights. Yeah. It, it gives him AOE damage. It gives him really long range. It, you know, attack speed, bonus damage. His ultimate is just ridiculously strong, and uh, Quantic, they have really great AOE setup. You know, if Aurelia, if Aurelia gets tanky early on, she dives into uh, CLG and maybe yeah. shuts down Big Fat. Big Fat, you know, maybe catch is caught off guard by Aurelia, and then they're all clumping on the uh, Yuzuki, and then Quantic follows up with the Malphite, and then they follow up with the Gragas, and then they follow up the Lulu ultimate, and they follow up with the Twitch. So it's it's a really nice combo uh, team for Quantic right now, but it's also very strong in the laning phase. And uh, Lulu definitely a strong pick in that bot lane. will try and you know deny some of that Caitlyn pressure. 
Yeah, there's going to be some good harass coming in that bot lane, but I think the key thing... Oh, he switched summoners last second. I wonder if that was intentional or not. But Twitch, I mean, one of those champions that needs some gold to be effective. I mean, of course, all AD carries do, but I mean, especially for him, if he gets behind in the beginning, he's going to have a really hard time throughout the game because mm -hmm. so much of his uh, uh, of his success relies on being sneaky and you know jumping in and out, roaming a little bit, getting some early kills. And if he doesn't get those and he's put behind, he can really get shut down constantly. And uh, yeah, that's the concern. He's yeah. always been really weak early on in the game, and that makes up for the fact that he's an annoying, you know, <laughs> uh, whatever with his invisibility. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of a good word there. Uh, that would be PC. Rat. But, rat. Yeah, he's he a is rat. an annoying rat with his invisibility. Um, so yeah, he is kind of weak early on. Um, it used to be. I mean, I I can't even begin to describe how painful it was when Twitch was uh, popular. For anyone who played through season one, uh, there was a point in time where Twitch was like the number one AD carry because he, he how uh, long his stealth lasted. Now his stealth is really short, but because of how long it lasted, he, you could never engage on him. And then in team fights, he would insta win every single team fight because he did so much damage. Wow. And so uh, Twitch coming back now after some of the changes, um, we'll see you know how that's going to work out for them. CLG, they still have that Diana pick, and I really like Big Fat on Diana. Yeah, I think it's it's a perfect pick for him. It's a, a very aggressive pick. He's safe in the mid lane. That's one of the things you can definitely say about Big Fat is how safe he is. He's always safe in that mid lane, and then he's mechanically very strong in team fights. So getting that Diana pick rather than being forced to win his his lane he can be safe and then roam and win other lanes and be strong later on in the game yeah we saw how successful he was last game with diana so if they see the same success in this game it's gonna be a really big issue for quantic but on the other hand quantic probably realizes what's going on now how frequent the tower dives were how frequent the roaming was coming out of big fat and in which case hopefully they'll be a little bit more prepared in this situation um i think it's also interesting hot shot bringing out the nidalee yep I mean, 80 Nidalee, too. And that's, 80? that's okay. something that we, uh, we've we seen a lot of Nidalee recently. We joked when Hotshot, you know, when Voivoy was kicked off of the team, <laughs> Hotshot was looking at everyone playing Nidalee, and he was like, oh, Nidalee. <laughs> She's good again. She's good. She's viable player. again. <laughs> I'm going back to the top lane. <laughs> but he, he switches off of the teleport last second. So um, misses a little bit of that split pushing potential. We've yep. seen, you know, some backdoor teleports from CLG in the past, but... Um, you know, Seth is always kind of a threat with them, but uh, Nidalee's definitely very strong, and it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. I mean, that when Hotshot was originally playing Nidalee, he was unbelievable. You know, mm -hmm. he was it, no one was playing Nidalee at the time, and he kind of he broke her, and he realized, okay, she's the the strongest laner in the game because her auto attacks used to be her base stats were a lot stronger, her heal was stronger, her spears were stronger. So she's str the strongest laner in the game. You just constantly are wearing people down as Nidalee and winning your lane, and then you could leave lane uber farmed and already at an advantage, and then you're just chucking spears and yeah. killing people, and it was just so strong. Yeah. Just and when you he think also, you're he safe. He had like five Nidalee pages. Wow. That was the cool thing is um, that Hotshot, he played Nidalee so much and he realized all the different matchups. He had like five Nidalee pages where he's like, okay, this is my AD Nidalee page in this matchup. This is my AP Nidalee page in this matchup. This is my pushing page. This is, you know, uh, it, so depending on what lane he was dealing with, he knew exactly what the perfect runes and masteries combinations were to just absolutely dominate. Yeah. She, he was definitely strong. When I first started getting into League of Legends, it was all about Nidalee on Hotshot, and that's all I heard about. And, uh, yeah, he was pretty dominant back then, and a lot of people are talking about it. And then was it nerfs that happened, or was it just yeah, it was, uh, she it fell was, out she of the meta? She was nerfed okay. so many. She was nerfed a lot, like repeated nerfs over and over again. And then after they had nerfed her, they like took a bat to her knees, and <laughs> they, they hobbled her. Like, have you seen the movie Misery? Yeah. So that's what they did to Nidalee. And then everyone realized, oh, wait, no, it wasn't that bad. Nidalee's still good. But at, at the time, because of um, you know the, the number of other bruisers and whatnot that were stronger in the top lane, it came to a point where Nidalee could no longer win the lane. And that's how you, what you always used to do with Nidalee. Is your only goal was to win the lane because she's a little bit weaker in team fights. Hmm. But even now, you see Nidalee's just a safe pick. She doesn't usually win the lane anymore. But what she does do very well is... Uh, she sustains in that top lane. She holds it. She can push very quickly. And uh, if you fall behind against Nidalee, then, you know, as the game progresses, she can start to win it. So it's she's a very 
subtle kind of nuanced pick still in mm -hmm. that top lane. I think it was just a, a lot of shift in strategy where before it was, you know, a lot of poking and using those spears and being oh, effective. Now it seems to be centered more around like split pushing and abusing her attack speed with her damage and her range and being able to split push well and backdoor like we've seen CLG do uh, a ton. I mean, she doesn't have teleport this time around, so we shouldn't expect it, but uh, it real shift in the strategy and the way that Nidalee was used uh, versus a year ago. And once again, we see that Quantic, they're actually uh, going for lane swap. So CLG went for the lane swap last game. And now Quantic, they don't want Twitch to be uh, focused by Caitlyn. And we talked about the previous game, how Nian need to put pressure uh, with uh, with that Caitlyn. Well, now Doublelift wants to put that pressure. And instead, uh, he's going to have oh. that pressure against Yuzuki. They do force them out. They're going to be able to steal this. So high L9 already at a disadvantage. And uh, we'll see what this bot lane can do. So Doublelift and Lokodoko, they have the lane to just completely shut down Yuzuki. We'll see if they can do it. Hotshot already getting a lot of damage in Lemon. He's just clearing out all the traps. So he's, <laughs> he's uh, on the hunt for those tasty little uh, treats. Yeah. Or I guess th there's no treats in the Nidalee traps. That's just Caitlyn. <laughs> I could go for a treat right now. But uh, yeah, CLG again controlling buffs and doing what they did well last game. And um, looks like they're not going to have as strong of an, as an advantage as they did last game. But Still good, taking the blue. I think we there was a stat that came out where it was like if in solo queue, if you steal the blue, you yeah. win 70% of the games. or 90%. Yeah, I don't know. It's some it obnoxious really number, but... Um, you know, I kind of felt like that was almost an ad hoc fallacy, though, yeah. because if you take the blue, then it right off the bat, it means you have a coordinated team, and it means that you pro possibly are getting like a level one kill or something like that. So if you have a coordinated team in solo queue, yeah, you're going to win most of the games. Yeah, and you're gonna your opponent's gonna rage. <laughs> At least I would be raging. Oh yeah. But yeah. So here in the top lane, you know, Lulu's there to uh, to lay down some damage, and uh, Lulu actually good poke and good CC, really strong in lane, and has that ability uh, to clear the la help clear the lane pretty quick, which is why her and Graves can be a really strong combination, or her and Sivir able to push down the minions really quickly. Cool. We're seeing them already putting a lot of pressure on this lane, on this tower, going down pretty quick. And that's what you can do with the 2v1 lane with strong pushers like Lulu. And that's that's the big strength, is taking that early tower. So um, we'll see what they can do. And also, one advantage, uh, the Aurelia 2v1, you always have to be concerned that with a strong jungler, you can pick up a kill. Malphite's pretty weak early on, so there's not a threat there. CLG knows that they don't have to worry about uh, Aurelia. So that's kind of a disadvantage for Quantic. But at the same time, on the opposite's true for CLG too, because uh, Nidalee can't pick up kills with the jungle help, really. Uh, maybe later on, but there's just not enough damage at this point. So they know right now, Hyle 9 sitting down bottom. He's babysitting Yuzuki, just like the previous game. Yeah. And that, that leaves Chouster open to just do whatever he wants. He's taking his red right now, but then he can put some pressure around the map, maybe steal some stuff from Hyle 9, just because he's sitting here. You know, they have complete vision of him. And that, that vision advantage for CLG right now may be underestimated a little bit by Quantic, but he... Hyle 9 really just wants to make sure Yuzuki just doesn't fall too far behind. Yeah, that's definitely a, a stylistic difference between the two teams. While High both games just been kind of sitting in that lane in the 2v1 trying to help out, trying to put some pressure, allow Yuzuki to free farm. Meanwhile, Chouster pretty much nowhere to be seen in the 2v1 lane. He's coming up now trying to put some pressure, uh, trying to help out a little bit, but for the most part, mostly absent, which is the exact opposite of High in that bot lane. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he's going in for this, but if he picks someone up with his uh, rupture, he'd be able to grab him. He does walk past a ward. He has the double buff, so he's very strong right now, but he's going to walk down, and Big Fat walks in, steals the wraith, so knowing that Hyle 9 is bot, it allows Big Fat to take advantage of that situation, and uh, he's pressuring Wild Turtle in the mid lane, but you see already a nice gold lead over Wild Turtle, so uh, Big Fat's really uh, ready. He gets the rupture. They actually might almost go in on this, but they force Wild Turtle back. He's fairly low, and Big Fat is in complete control of that lane. And again, Chalster's just running around doing whatever he wants. He he knows both of them are low bot, so he can pick up uh, the wolves. They might actually go for a tower dive the next time they push up to these minions. Yeah, this is a really interesting strategy from Quantic, actually, because it's buff control in a no jungle kind of situation. Hai is not in the jungle. He's really just staying in lane, in which case he... The, 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 the minions are free for Chouster to come in and take whatever he wants. I think it's really for them just about buffs. Control the buffs, get those, hand them out, and then help out the 2v1 lane and uh, trying to help stabilize it, make it a little bit more even. 
Big Fat still taking some race, so he's still pulling ahead in that mid lane. Bot lane is very close to going down. Top is as well. So both teams looking for a really aggressive early push. Hotshot in a slightly better situation than Aurelia, but because of all the pressure from High L9, Aurelia is actually uh, keeping up with him for the most part. But what it has opened up is more pressure from CLG around the map. So even if, if it's not resulting in kills, it's resulting in a 500 gold advantage. They're close. It seems like they're actually going to be the first team to take down this turret. Yuzuki trying to force this engage. The slow doesn't actually land on the Loco Doco. So they do back off, but double if just constantly pressuring Aureli under that tower. Two more hits. They should be able to grab that. But in the meantime, Chouster coming up top. He wants to pick up Lemonation. Chouster going in pretty hard. The exhaust going on Lulu. She's going to get out with that W. But Nien going in Viz and Chouster pursuing. And some damage is going down for Nien. Oh, oh Chouster getting burned down with that poison. Is going to be enough with the ignite. Oh, it's going to be close, but no. Oh, my gosh. And he's going to go down, I think. I think oh, has it. Nice, with the first blood on Nian, and that's going to put him in a really good position. And now Turtle coming lane. in behind. He wants Hotshot here. He is level 6. He can get this kill very quickly. He walks over the trap. Hotshot gets the flash off, but there's the barrel. He misses. Wild Turtle <laughs> misses the barrel after Hotshot flashes out of the body slam. So they get the first blood up top. Nian's in a good situation. They will be able to grab this turret as well, so that's going to even out against CLG. But Wild Turtle wasting his time up top. Yeah. High L9, still level 5, about to be level 6, and that's what's going to make a really big difference in this game with considerably stronger ganks coming out of Malphite with level 6. Um, actually, we haven't seen him gank at all, so I wonder if that is the actual strategy, sitting in lane against that 2v1, waiting for level 6 to happen, putting him in a lot better position moving into the mid game. Well, it's interesting. It's I mean, it's, it's essentially running a dual lane. Yeah. And it's similar to... Um, a long time ago, before there was the uh, the AD support uh, meta, which has become just the way to play the game, yeah. essentially, because it's it's so strong. There's so many advantages. Everyone used to just play whatever they felt like, and you would run bot lane combos of, like, Garen and, you know, a support or something like that. So it's kind of that old same style. They do fall behind a little bit, uh, you know, because Cho'Gath is able to farm in the jungle. And yeah. the bigger thing is Big Fat. So... One thing that, you know, they, they took the advantage of the 2v2. It allowed Aurelia to stay uh, ahead of Nidalee, and that's that's a great advantage for them. So you see Hotshot compared with Aurelia. Having that 2v2 bot, it allowed uh, Aurelia to be in that, a good situation. But Big Fat is at a massive lead mid, which is not something you normally expect against Gragas. Normally, Gragas is going to be able to evenly farm or outfarm anyone in the game, but Big Fat is just on a tear right now. So we'll see you know, if that translates to any early aggression from them as Big Fat starts to roam. And High is level 6 now, so this could be an ultimate from him on Nunu over on the side. And Twitch is just laying down some damage down on Loco Doko, and he's going to go down really quick. Meanwhile, Big Fat LP going on Wild Turtle. Oh, and he isn't able to make it out of there. The they Caitlyn ult back gets him. him. Nian's in a bad situation. There's the rupture from Chouster. He can get in, and Big Fat, he's going to be able to pick this up. The double kill for double lift after getting that ultimate on Gragas. The triple kill. Perfect play from CLG, turning that around against Quantic. Great. And Yuzuki down in the bot lane, jumping on Hot Shot, and he goes down. And this is going to put Quantic in a good position to do some damage on this turret, maybe taking the whole thing down. There is no CLG around to stop him. But, but CLG is just going to swap yeah. turret after turret. So it's even right now, one to one. Quantic's going to be able to drop this turret for sure. The only question is, can Caitlyn and Cho'Gath take down that turret? But Big Fet is so strong right now. And 3-0 and oh for Caitlyn, that's the kind of pressure that we wanted to see out of Nien the last game. And he was farming very effectively. Um, at this point in the game, Nien was, you know, around the same, maybe even slightly higher, maybe close to 100. But... Uh, Double lift, he drops the turrets. They're able to even up the turrets. It's two to two right now, but Quantic's in position to take this dragon. So that yes. dragon is really going to help Quantic. They're making sure that they move around the map, and every time CLG takes an advantage, they're grabbing something as well. Yeah, exactly. Quantic last game, they would lose a turret somewhere, and then they would gain something somewhere else, whether it was a buff or something that would contribute to their win in the game. Oh, and double lift, Twitch can just sit back. Wow, that is quick burst. That is quick burst. Wow, and uh, Nian just kind of backing out, playing a little bit safe. Dragon goes down to Quantic. That's definitely going to help gonna them out. They're going to take this top tower, though, because Big Fat's coming up. He's actually going to try and get Nian. He's going to get Vision with his Q. If he lands it, Nian is going to go down. There it is, the pullback. They drop him very quickly. Caitlyn with the ultimate just for the security. But now they should be able to take this tower as well. The minions are dropping, so they might not be able to grab it in time. And the tower going down pretty quick. Loco Doco tanking some damage. It looks like they're going to stick around. Malphite is coming in, so let's see if he'll be able to resist. 
to they not can ultimate. This. He can, can win this. Yeah, definitely. There is some AO, significant Perfect AOE damage. from double lift. Oh my gosh. And the Malphite ult just went up. There it is right there. Turtle comes in with that ultimate, goes down on double lift. Double lift's getting burned down really quickly, and he goes down, and that's what Quantic needed in this situation. They need to let make sure that, big, or that uh, double lift does not get too big, because last game, he was the, the main factor for CLG's win, how Fetty was getting, and they need to put a stop to that in this game. And now Hotshot, while the, everyone was top, he does get some pressure on the bot turret. So he's keeping up the push. CLG, they're making sure that they're pressuring all sides of the map simultaneously and, uh, you know, taking advantage of their vision. So that's really what's happening with CLG right now, is they're taking advantage of uh, a vision advantage over Quantic whenever they see Quantic. Both teams are doing it very effectively, though. So it's 4-4 four to four right now, and Quantic actually has a slight lead over them. And uh, it, a lot of it, it's going to be interesting to see could come down to how strong Twitch can become. Yeah. And Twitch is slightly behind Caitlyn right now just because Double Lift is, you know, really just putting himself ahead and their whole team is uh, helping him out. But uh, Twitch is in a pretty good situation. He's farming effectively. He has one kill. So once he can finish a couple of those um, items, that could really be huge. Hotshot doesn't know. Twitch is there. Just going to lay down some damage. Hotshot not going to have any issues getting out of there. But he's just going to sit and heal and maybe throw some spears, just try to get some farm. In the end, there's not a whole lot he can do. He can try to, you know, poke him down a little bit, but the escape on Italy is pretty strong, to say the least, and she'll be able to get out of there no problem. Oh, and also, while Hotshot's down holding this bottom lane, he, it allows Caitlyn in particular to be effective at shutting down uh, Aurelia, because Aurelia is going to have a harder time landing, but then also being involved in team fights. And so CLG, they you know, they've they been the aggressor the so far. Top lane, Yuzuki, there's the slow. He gets around that trap, so he's actually not going to land into it, but there's the exhaust. He jumps into double lift, trying to turn around. He's actually very close to taking out double lift. There's the flash, trying to pick it up. One more attack, but double lift does win that exchange, and CLG still looking for some fights just getting caught out there he was trying to play possum trying to sit back and uh, maybe catch double lift out of position but luckily loco doko was there to to help clean up and you know the sn the chain snowballs is quite difficult to get away from um and so he wasn't going to go anywhere and the top tower goes down high all by him is lonesome i think clg and specifically loco doko and double lift a little bit concerned that they're going to get caught out and so they're going to back up a little bit Chalster gets that blue steel, they're going for it, but it's turning into a 3v3. But Nidalee's a little bit weak right now. He has no mana, so Hotshot, can he be, uh, be okay in this? The what? End, he loses vision a little bit too soon, but there's the Lulu ultimate to help him out. Big Bet's out of mana. Can he take down the end? The end wins that battle. And now Hotshot, it's all up to him and Chalster if they can pick up this kill. Quantic Turtle, it seems like Wild Turtle's gonna be able to win this. Lemon Nation trying to get out of there as uh, Hotshot's trying to chase him down. There's the flash from Chalster. Aurelia jumps in. Hotshot, he can't. No, there's one last attack. He picks it up, but then he goes down. So three members for two members of Quantic. Quantic comes out ahead on that uh, exchange. And good for Quantic continuing. I'm, they're, they keep going in and out of being ahead, uh, but the game is so close at this point. It can really go anyway. But yeah, Nien, is he going to get big enough? He's two and three. He's getting some farm. He's still significantly behind. Caitlyn, and that's going to be a real, issue, a real issue for him. He's going to need that damage to be able to be relevant in the late game. And so it is even right now. Um, it's kind of like what we saw in the previous game, except that at this point, CLG was actually ahead in kills, but uh, really aggressive pushing from CLG. Both teams, um, you know, playing a really smart game so far. Pink ward. So both teams are very uh, safe there. In the end, he's come out with the ward, but doesn't matter. Oh my they pick gosh. up the kill on the Caitlyn almost immediately. And that's just the strong initiation of both Malphite uh, and Gragas being able to pick that up. Yeah, significant damage in a very small amount of time. The pink ward was, I mean, there wasn't enough. And he probably thought he was Especially safe. Especially their pink ward, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's actually surprising. Why is there a pink ward there? The world may never know. But, yeah, I got caught out to really see quick. For other pink wards. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah. Well said. And so got caught, burnt down really quick, and just being able to put some pressure onto this turret here. And here comes Lulu, big fat, getting caught out. Oh my gosh, in the Gragas ultimate. And he gets burned down really quick with high, getting that kill. And it looks like they're going to be able to take this turret and get even a bigger lead going in. And I'm, I'm wondering if big fat actually knew that the Gragas ultimate was up, because I don't think he would have gone in if he did. So he knew that Caitlyn was caught out by Gragas and Malphite, and maybe he thought, oh, Gragas must have used the ultimate to kill him. And a lack of communication there, maybe, because he dived in. Um, a couple of them were low. He was able to poke them down. But if there was no Gragas ultimate, he should have been able to dive in, use his E, and then back out. But because the Gragas ultimate was there, they were able to pick up the kill onto him. So um, you kind of have to wonder what the communication there uh, or was there with CLG. 
Yuzuki up here in the bot lane, just hanging out, getting some farm going on. Both teams kind of just sitting back at this point, trying to get their bearings, starting to move towards that mid. We're going to pause for a second, have a good time. And uh, yeah, they're just sitting back and I mean, we're looking at this game. Quantic is in good shape. They have yeah. seemingly a stronger team fight team because of that Malphite and because of that Gragas. Um, and we're looking at CLG. It's more, I mean, they have pretty good damage, but mostly single target for the most part. A lot of it coming out of Caitlyn, who is 5-2, and two, 159 farm. Um, what what can CLG do to, to get back into this game? Is it as, I mean, is it as simple as just winning team fights, or is it more than that? Well, one strength of their team is that, if you notice, they don't have a team that needs to be clumped up. They don't have a team that's, you know, going to tend to be sitting on the back line or, um, you know, uh, engaging. It's their their team is going to be very spread in these fights. So even though Quantic has this insanely strong AOE team and great team fighting capabilities, yeah. CLG actually, you know, they can split with Nidalee. So uh, Hotshot's just going to continue to split push. Uh, Caitlyn has great range. So usually you expect Caitlyn to be able to stay out of the ultimate of Malphite. Double if maybe not expecting the initiation there. So he kind of gets caught out. Um, but Caitlyn usually can sit far enough back. Then in the meantime, Shogath and Nunu, they can hold the kind of front line, and then Caitlyn can kind of sit off to the side and wait to pick people up. So they're, they're not all going to be clumped together for this AoE. And that actually is going to work well against Gragas in particular, because Malphite and Gragas, um, they have great initiation. Like, this is the point in the game where Malphite and Gragas are kings. Yeah. But later on in the game, if Gragas can't hit his barrels on multiple members, then it's just not enough damage. You, you, they can't take people down quickly enough um, so it really, Gragas needs people to be clumped up, and uh, otherwise he falls off late in the game, which is why people didn't play him for a long time, but he's, he's come back into really big popularity because of his quick burst. Um, so that's that's going to be an advantage for CLG, but they also, they want to just keep up the tower pressure and then just, you know, kind of pick people off. And they're not, it's going to be tough for them to pick people off for kills because they don't have a lot of CC. They have a very light CC team. It's really just Diana and Shogath but they can uh, split all the lanes and keep up the turret pressure and then just wear them down. They want to just slowly wear down Quantic's members so that Quantic can't fight because they're all too low. Yeah, because if they can fight, it's going to be a really big issue for them. CLG's going to have a hard time handling that team fight. And, uh, I mean, one of the key things we said in, during the break was that, you know, they needed to shut down Big Fat LP, and it seems like, to a certain extent, they have. I mean, yeah. he doesn't have the, the numerous kills that he had in the last game, and he's really relying on just those assists and his farm, which isn't all that great. I well, mean, it's decent, 16 thing. minutes in the game, 130, that's pretty strong, but if you look at Caitlyn, 165, it could be higher, he could be having uh, more of a presence. Well, that's that's the funny thing, is Wild Turtle was able to catch up uh, against Big Fat, because Big Fat had a, almost a 50 gold lead, and now they're even, but they get the dragon, Heil 9 engaging, Loco Dogo drops very quickly, Wild Turtle right in the middle of that team, there's the Lulu ultimate as well, can CLG try and turn this around? They have double lift off on the side, and everyone is very low, Hotshot is running right through the middle of the team, but there is no pressure on the Nian, and so Twitch is actually going to be able to pick this up, a double kill for a uh, hot shot, but Chalster trying to get out as Nian chases him. And he's slowly pursuing, but Yazuki able to chase down Caitlyn, take her out, and Chowster is on running for his life, but he's going to be able to get just those last little bit of damage to take that kill, and that is going to put Quantic in a great position. Going to get this tower, probably one more if they push quickly enough, in which case it's going to be just amazing for them. Good team fighting, and the thing was they were able to push uh, push double lift out early enough where he wasn't able to do full damage, and that's the power of Aurelia. Can really just dive on him and uh, and and stick it to him. I'm honestly, uh, it, it was interesting though. You were talking about Big Fat, and it seemed like Big Fat had a great early lead, and it just it's it's fallen away from it, slipped yeah. through his fingertips. Um, you know, so you know he he isn't very effective in the team fights. Uh, you would think that uh, he would want to be able to shut down Nien, but having uh, he actually engaged on Wild Turtle, I believe, and then Lulu had the ultimate to protect them, and Lulu can use the ultimate on anyone, so that's always going to be that threat. But um, I don't know, we'll, we'll kind of see what Big Fat can do, and he actually he went for the Abyssal first again. So he doesn't have that disengage, he just has, you know, the pure kind of damage, but um, 
I don't know, I think maybe missing out on that quick Zonia just kind of hurts him, because that's that's how we've seen Ambition uh, for Azubu Blaze been playing the Diana, and it seems to work out very effectively, being able to engage and then uh, disengage with the Zonias. Well, I could see last game where he had all those kills where he's beefy enough because he's so far ahead that he can take a little bit of damage and do a lot of damage while he's in the fight. And so maybe not going Zonia's first was okay, but in this situation where you're going to get burned down really quick because you aren't doing as good as you were last game, mm -hmm. then I think Zonia would have been a much better uh, much better call in this situation. Hotshot still putting on that split push pressure. He gets, He's going to get vision here, so it does uh, pop the trap on the golem. He dodges the barrel. He could actually turn around on him because uh, they're split, but they don't have vision of Quantic right now. So he doesn't exactly know if it's just Gragas or if it's the rest of the team. But once he sees them go mid, he'll probably put a little bit pressure on, more pressure on this. Try and steal this. Big Fat's actually coming in as well. They want to engage in Wild Turtle here. And Hotshot getting, take a bunch of damage, but here comes Big Fat coming in, diving on him. Oh, and Hotshot almost goes down. Oh, wow. That Hot was shot really, living. really close, doing some damage. And here comes Quantic. And uh, Caitlyn went down really quick. I didn't even see what happened, but Caitlyn goes down. And that's a huge blow for CLG. They could have had a dragon. They could have been in a great position. But now it's 4v4. And now, you know, Double Lift was a significant portion of CLG's damage and is now dead. And uh, so now this is going to put Quantic. Are they going Baron? Yeah, they are going for the Baron. There's Caitlyn down. Uh, they have the vision. Uh, the high old nine ultimate is down, so they're going to be kind of weak in this next fight, but they can take it down fairly quickly. I don't know if CLG is going to get there in time. The previous fight, they engaged on CLG while they were off on the blue with the Malphite ultimate, but CLG, they're not going to get here in time. Chowster is trying to come in. Hotshot's trying to come in. There's the rupture as well, if they can try and steal this, but Malphite holds onto it with the smite. Chowster wasn't in range to try and steal it. Yuzuki zoning them off on the side. Well, Hotshot actually almost taking down the end, and this is how they win the fight. Hotshot off the backside, able to put the pressure on, but they still get the Baron, and it's on three members. They're able to take two down. Loco Doku flashes over the wall. He's trying to still force this fight, but they have to watch out for Wild Turtle. And here he comes diving in. Oh, with that burst damage on Nien, and there's a little bit of a moment here as the game catches up. All right. Hold tight, guys. Instead of sitting there, I'm just going to come back. We can take a look <laughs> at this fight again, and just hopefully by the time we get back up there, it will have corrected itself. So you see Hot Shot at the very beginning. If he had taken down the end, that would have been huge for them. But almost taking him down, Aurelia was very strong, though, able to pressure their, their back line. And so coming through once again, does it work? Wild Turtle coming over the backside, trying to pick up the kills. Big Fat. <laughs> well, we can wait. We can just sit tight, see what happens. Big Fat, what are you doing? Get away from those golems, you <laughs> madman. Uh, but I mean, in this fight, Big Someone Fat really was able to. these cans. Yeah, these, it's not working out so good. Uh, we'll right, what sit are you saying? Oh, I was just saying that Nien almost got burned down. Big Fat risking a lot to dive into the back. They, I'm pretty sure they didn't have an idea that Turtle was about to come around. Um, so it's going to be close. But uh, we'll uh, we'll sit tight, guys, just one second. Give us a moment of time, and uh, we'll see if we can't get back, get this game lined up for you. Yeah, so looking at the fight one last time. <laughs> it's more exciting every single time I see it. They're taking down the Baron. <laughs> They're just quickly taking it down, guys, and uh, hopefully it works. The last time hopefully cross your fingers, everybody. Work. Can they get Say, it this time? Uh, chime Can Chowster get it? And then uh, someone's passing me a note. And the servers have gone down, ladies and gentlemen. I was just passed a note that the servers in NA are down, and uh, so uh, we're just gonna sit tight and hopefully they come back up. Um, but can Wild Turtle get it this time? <laughs> yeah, let's see, here we go. He goes in. Big Fat. <sighs> okay. Nunu's ultimate still up. He could get a really nice... I want to see Loco Doco when we come back yeah. and get a really sweet Nunu ultimate. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully everything's fixed shortly, guys. Uh, that kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hopefully little sad. Hopefully the servers are okay. Yeah, uh, I mean... I mean, I hope the servers aren't down for two reasons. One, really want to see the end of this game. Two, really want to go home and play ranked. <laughs> so if the servers are down, I'm going to be really sad. Um, but imagine, on the plus side, guys, all the people who are about to lose a ranked game right now that just got a loss forgiven. That's true. That's millions of people just got a loss forgiven. And those, forgiven people, and and those people that aren't playing a ranked game that are about to lose, 
they got like CLG and Quantic. Like CLG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, I tell you what. Let's, let's cut to yeah, a commercial. Let's do a commercial break. We'll let's do a quick call. commercial break, guys. We're gonna figure out what's going on. If the servers really went down, then then wow. Then we have something to figure out. But that means uh, we get to see this game again. Yeah, I mean, we could. We could redo this game. I'm not going to make any promises yet. We're going to go check it out, guys. We'll be right back with the end of game two of Quantic versus CLGNA. Sorry for the holdup, but real quick. Oh, yeah. IGN.com slash IPL giveaways. Oh, yeah. Once again, 10 VIP passes to IPL5. So you want to get those. Also, Instagram. Uh, hashtag IPL5. Send some pictures on Instagram. You know, some photos of yourself uh, at home dancing maybe in your briefs i'm sure nick's actually going to be the one judging we're all yeah, going to judge I'll be, in the I'll office be, I'll be on but there. nick in particular he's looking forward to your images so boy uh, am i ever send, send them in wow. guys um also again you know it was a great suggestion last time since we have a, a longer break presumably this time <laughs> feel free to tweet us with uh you know all of your criticisms of CLG and just be like, oh, CLG's yeah. terrible. They were going to lose the game, or of Quantic and say that CLG's the best. Uh, whichever way you're leaning. In a perfect know. world, this game is going to continue here in about five minutes, hopefully less time. And so we want to know how can CLG get back in the game? Is this Quantic's game to win? Uh, so let us know on Twitter at us, and uh, I guess we're going to cut to a commercial yep. break. We'll be right back, guys.